And I'll take uh, questions at the end of my presentation today. So if you have any questions about the professional site as you're submitting that, or even if you're fixing anything on your ePortfolio still, uh, I'll take any questions on that. Uh, but let me go ahead. I want to focus primarily on the responsive site and show you some examples. And I'm going to start with the professional site and show some examples of professional sites that have been redesigned to be responsive. So let's first of all talk about what responsive design is. And hopefully, if um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and go to the course page. So in module nine, if you went to the start here page, you went through all these items um, in order, starting with the ePortfolio and then with the professional site. And now we are at the responsive um, redesign, our last final project. And there is also a discussion here. So if you go to discussion five, that is due uh, tonight as well as the professional site. And the reason I have it due tonight is because I want you to read about the responsive web design before you begin your responsive project. So if I had that due next Tuesday, it wouldn't give you time to really process this information and uh, to engage with what responsive web design is. So I want you to do these readings, see some examples and best practices and watch this a brief video about responsive web design. And then part that's part one. Part two is just a little extra thinking ahead about augmented reality and how that's going to change web design over the next five years or the next few years or so. So you can read this article and just respond to that. I'd just like to hear your thoughts on that, uh, thinking about web development and the future of it. So with that said, I would like for you to do part one and submit that tonight by tonight um, so that you have time to look into that before you do your responsive re redesign. But then if you wanna do part two after that and then turn it in next Tuesday, that will be fine if you wanna break it up that way. So the final date is, gonna, is May 4th for everything in this class you won't be able to submit anything after May 4th, which is next Tuesday. So this is gonna, this discussion forum is gonna close on mid, at midnight or 11.59 on May 4th. So go ahead and try to do part one with reading one by tonight. And then if you wanna post the second part by next Tuesday, I will go back and look at that. So it's a point for each part. So just um, make sure that you do both parts and that you get the point for each part, but you can submit it up to May 4th. But I would like for you to at least do part one um, by tonight before you, the idea is to you do it before you begin a final project three res responsive redesign. Any questions about that um, as far as the submission? Okay, then let me go on and talk a little bit more about responsive web design. These slides are available on the course page in module nine, and I'm not going to go um, into it very much because I have changed this, this assignment over the years, the past few years that I've taught it. Before, I used to have students require them to recreate a fully responsive site in Dreamweaver using Bootstrap. Um, but I found that was a little challenging or very challenging for a lot of students um, so late in the semester. So I have changed that to give you some other options. So you can still do that if you want to. And that's what th this slide is about, creating a fully responsive website using Bootstrap. And that is an option, but there are some other options too. So I'm just going to go through this quickly. So if you wanted to do this option for extra credit, you can design a fully responsive website um, in Bootstrap using Dreamweaver. So the, if you were to do that, the objectives would be to create a Bootstrap page in Dreamweaver, uh, defining a responsive page grid. So if you watch that video for discussion five, 
he talks about having a grid where for a desktop, for example, you may have a grid with three columns. And then if your screen size would respond or your design layout would respond to various screen sizes. So if you're looking at it on a tablet, it will shrink down to two columns. If you're looking at it on a mobile device, it would shrink down to one column. So that's a responsive page grid. So you can work with that kind of grid and with the responsive page content where your text is going to respond to the different screen sizes and your images will also respond to that. So you can use Bootstrap and Dreamweaver to do that. You can use CSS to control fluid grid content. Um, you can hide certain features on the mobile format, for example, you can so you can restrict element heights and overflow, you can use the CSS transition, uh, so you can format a site to be mobile friendly. And that, I'm, like I said before, I used to require, but I'm not requiring this anymore because it is very in time intensive. So if you want to go for it, do the extra credit, but you don't have to. So what is Bootstrap? It's an HTML and CSS based framework that allows faster and easier web development, which includes responsive page design. And that's where you can automatically adapt your layout to the various screen sizes for different devices that you'd be viewing the site on. And Bootstrap recognizes four screen sizes using a 12 column grid. Media queries define um, CSS code using different font sizes, different display sizes. So you could change the font size of an element uh, for, so you could add a media query, query to change the font size for specific elements where you would view it on different screen sizes. And the browser would process that code. So I'm not gonna get into that because you're not required to do this, but just in case you want to know um, what that is and how to use it. So in, in Dreamweaver, you'll see a visual media query bar with color codes. So the green bar shows the maximum width for extra small displays. The blue bar um, shows the minimum width and max width for a, a value range for small displays. And then the purple bar media query shows the max width value for medium and large displays. So it's just so you know what those mean if you do look at Bootstrap in Dreamver, Dreamweaver, and I'll show you an example. Um, you'll see those colored bars. So with Bootstrap, um, you can use, you be using this 12 column grid, and then you can resize those columns based on off of that grid. And you can use CSS to format it. So again, I'm not going to go into that. This is where you can use helper classes to hide certain elements um, when your screen size changes. You can watch and do the video uh, and textbook tutorials on Project 8 Bootstrap in the Against the Clock textbook if you want. It'll show you how to do that, but I'm not going to go into that um, because it's not required. So I just wanted to kind of run through those slides just so you can kind of get an idea of what Bootstrap is and what it does. And then I want to talk about the assignment. So starting off the professional site, do tonight. Don't forget to submit your URL address. And also make sure everyone in your group submits your personal URL address to your professional site homepage. So don't link to your partner's URL address. Everyone in the group has to host the site on their remote root folder. If you're using the ASU server or other, it has to be hosted on your root folder on the server that you're using. And so everybody has to have all the files for their professional site, even if you all worked on it together, um, share that with every member of your group so that you can host it on your site. And then you're gonna add it to your root folder that you have already. So I'll show you an example of what that organization will look like too. And I've showed some of th these examples to the groups I've met with y'all and talked about these examples, but I'm just gonna show this quickly again. This was a professional site I did for a small business. And then I did a redesign of that using Bootstrap in Dreamweaver. And I just use a template in Dreamweaver. So that's fine if you want to use a template. I'm all for that. So um, here's an example on the responsive site redesign on that 
redesigned site. So you can see that, that it's still consistent in the colors and the basic design feel, but there are some changes to the site. And if I, if I shrink my screen size down, it will shrink down. Um, it responds to the smaller screen size, whereas the original site is not responsive. So I shrink my screen size down. The elements don't respond to the screen size change. So that is what um, a responsive site does. So if we look more closely at the responsive site, plan. Um, remember, this is a redesign, either a redesign or redesign plan. And so I'm going to show you different examples of how you can approach this. So look, look over the requirements. These are directions if you're going to use Bootstrap. And then uh, make sure that you include your original title and logo. You can change the logo if you want to streamline it for a mobile format, for example, for so the graphics load more quickly. You can edit things down. You can remove parts of the content. So look at, read those articles in discussion five and watch the video to, to think about before you begin your design, what needs to happen to for this redesign? So what needs to change? Because it's a different context, viewing it on a desktop computer and viewing it on a mobile phone. So if you're looking at a site on a mobile phone, um, you're interacting with it in a different way. So one thing that I did on this mobile redesign was I changed the navigation and I moved it to the bottom because usually you scroll down on your phone and then when you get to the bottom, you don't want to scroll all the way back up to see the navigation menu. So then I can click on these buttons to go to other pages on my site rather than having to scroll back up again. So that's one thing to think about more white space, um, Maybe not if you have some videos or graphics that are going to take a long time to load, you may want to remove those on the responsive site. So there needs to be some changes. So don't just submit the same site, but make sure you're thinking responsibly about the site when you redesign it. And then if you look at the next page, here's the rubric that I'll be grading on. So make sure you look at that too. And this example is linked here. So let's go back and look at some of those other options for the responsive site. I'm going to start off, I guess, with um, the most difficult one, and that would be to do it in Dreamweaver. And here is an example. Um, let me start off with showing anything to show that that one, um, one that is completely responsive. So this would be, this is one that I did using Bootstrap in Dreamweaver, where I, I also used a template. And let me just go ahead and show you. I don't have this one open right now in Dreamweaver, but if I wanted to create a new file, I could just go to File, New, and go to Bootstrap Templates. And then you can uh, select one of these templates. So I think maybe I selected this one, and then I can create it. And I base that photography, my photography site off of this template. Um, so I've got a drop down menu. I added images, I added my own content, and I made some changes to it. And this is what the site looks like. So here is my photography site. Let me go to the home page. And then I can go to the different pages on this site. And then if I shrink down to a mobile screen size, um, my navigation menu turns into a hamburger menu so I can easily access all the other pages on the site. And everything is responsive on this site. So the text is responding to the smaller screen size as well as the image. So everything is working fully functioning responsively. So that would be a fully responsive site that was done using Bootstrap in Dreamweaver. Now I'm going to go back to Dreamweaver and show you another site that is resp has responsive elements, but it's not completely responsive. So if you want to do that, that's fine too. And that's um, this ivory tower website that I have. So this one, I did not use a template for this site. Um, remember, I used I showed an example of how I use W3 schools to copy over the code for this horizontal navigation bar. Uh, so this one is a mixture. So if I go to um, this team page, for example, I used image maps or hotspots 
or these images. And I can click on these image maps to go to other pages in my site. And if I shrink this down, the image map is not responsive. I did not use a responsive element for that. Um, I probably should have, but I didn't because I created this graphic in Photoshop. But if I click on one of the pages here, this page, I used Bootstrap components so that if I shrink this page down, it is responsive. So my image responds and the, the text also responds to the screen size. And so you can have a mixture too. So here's an example of that. I have that one open in Dreamweaver. And you can see these visual media queries here that I was talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and close this one and show you this one. So this is that page I just showed you. And you can see with the um, media queries, I can see what it's going to look like at 576 pixel width. And then I can click on 768 pixels. Or you can select visual media queries for different widths for the screen sizes. So that's what the advantage of that is um, for using the visual media queries in Dreamweaver. So you can see what that preview is going to look like. And how I accessed the bootstrap component here, this is a fluid grid. I just went to CSS Designer. Remember, I didn't start off with bootstrap. This is an HTML web page. But you can still use Bootstrap components by using the insert panel. So normally we're using HTML. Well, I can select Bootstrap components, and then I can just drag and drop a container that's fluid or a grid row with columns, and I can select the number of columns, and I can adjust the size of these columns. Um, you, and it's a fluid container, so that means it's going to respond to the change in screen size. So you can start off with an HTML page and then select bootstrap components too. So that's another a way to approach it. Now, if you still um, don't want to do it in, boot, in bootstrap at all, you don't want to touch bootstrap at all, or you don't want to continue in Dreamweaver, there's still some other options. So I'm going to go. Um, Actually, let's start with, I got so many, there, here's one. So here's an example from last semester of an ePortfolio that was done in Dreamweaver. So I can go through and look at her about page, her portfolio, the resume, contact page. So all of that. And of course, this is not response, responsive because it wasn't required to be for the ePortfolio. So if I shrink down the screen size, it doesn't respond to the screen change. But if um, for her redesign, she took the ePortfolio and she redesigned it in Adobe XD. So if I go to Adobe XD, here is her redesign. And she redesigned it for a mobile screen size. So she just selected a mobile screen width. And then I can view this in Adobe XD. Let me just hide the background here so we can see this better. All right, so here's her home page. Here's the about page. There's the portfolio, resume, and contact. So the nice thing about XD is you can look at it as if you were going to see it on a, a, a website that's launched. Um, you can actually click on the navigation links and go through it that way. So this is how it, another way you can approach it. You can just do it in Adobe XD. Then we're going to look at another example here. Let's see, I may have lost that one. Oh, actually, this is the correct one. So this is a professional site. So this was a professional group site. This is, we can go to their homepage, um, various pages on their site. And then let's look at the redesign. So one of the students from that group redesigned this site in InDesign. And so same logo, same basic design, but then he selected a mobile screen size for the redesign. 
So you could do this in Photoshop also. Um, I think you can do it in Illustrator too. I haven't tried that in Illustrator, but if you just go to File, New Document, you can select here, Mobile in InDesign, and then you can select a device. So I could select iPhone 10, for example, and it's going to select this width in pixels for an iPhone 10. And that would get, uh, would open up that exact size for you to work with. And then you could adjust the height because that's going to change is just the scrolling. So that's another way you could, you could approach it. And you could either submit the package in design file. So make sure you go to file package so that it includes all of the graphics here. So everything is linked, it includes all the fonts, or you could export it. And I could even, if you're familiar with InDesign, you could even link the navigation using the um, interactive for PDF workspace and using hyperlinks and you could hyperlink the text in the navigation. So it would work like XD um, and I could just hyperlink everything so that it'll be linked to different pages in this document. And then I can go to file um, and then I can just export it as an interactive PDF. So I'm going to select interactive PDF. And I want to include all my media. I'm going to export that. And then you could just, just if you export it as a PDF file, you don't have to worry about the InDesign package. You could just submit the PDF file. So that's processing now. And now it's going to pull it up. And now uh, this one's not hyperlinked, but you could, could do that. I can just scroll through the pages and view all the pages for the mobile redesign. So that's an example of how you could do it in InDesign or Adobe XD. And then let's look at some other options. I'm going to go to the, this is on the course page in that, um, oh, that's the wrong class. Let me go back to our class here. So if you go to helpful resources, go to the final project website samples, and then you can see some examples of responsive sites that have been uploaded to the server or um, where they're using another web host with a content management system like Wix or WordPress um, or even Google Sites. So here is an example of one that was done using Bootstrap and Dreamweaver. So if I look at this site, uh, it doesn't respond to the screen size. But if I look at the responsive redesign, it does respond to the change in screen size. So I can compare. So make sure you don't save over your old um, site too, so I can compare the two. So that's an example of one that was done in Bootstrap. Then here's one you can compare and see um, her, the original site, and then she redesigned it using a CMS site so that it'll shrink down and respond to a mobile format and different screen sizes. Uh, here is one that's done on Wix because Wix, if you choose the template, it is, and with the Wix, it doesn't work on the desktop. So it's a little bit different. I have to view it on my mobile phone. So if you're using Wix, just um, be aware of that. You need to check it on your mobile phone. Um, you won't be able to see the responsiveness on the desktop. So I would have to go and check it on my mobile phone. And then there is Google Sites. And this one we can compare. Oh, that's the wrong one. Here's the original site that was done in Dreamweaver. And so you can see it does uh, um, respond to the changes in screen size. And then if we go to the redesign, this one was done in Google Sites. And with Google Sites, it is mobile friendly or responsive. So if I shrink it down, the navigation menu changes 
to the hamburger menu. So it makes the scrolling and the nav navigation much smoother in the mobile context. So if you wanted to use Google Sites, uh, it's very easy to use if you haven't used it before. All you have to do is go to your Google Suite and then go to your options menu and select Google Sites. And you can select a template or a blank site and I've got an example opened here. So here's one and I've done several um, research projects or case studies that I uh, presented using Google Sites. And the advantage of that is I didn't have to think about the code and so much about the layout, but I wanted to concentrate on the content. So if you were to use Google Sites, you would just transfer the content for either your ePortfolio or your professional site to the Google Sites. And you can include your images. You can upload all your graphics and images into your Google Drive and access them there. You can select different layouts and you can adjust the layout. So I customized this for my, the header area. I uploaded my own kind of graphic header and I were, and placed all my own text content. This is a photo that I cited here um, that I found um, for public domain use. And then I added these navigation buttons and I added these graphics. You can adjust the column widths and so forth as well. So there you do have some creative freedom here um, but it is within, working within a template, so you can change certain things and move them around and add graphics to make it your own to customize it. And here is what the final site looks like. And so if I look at it in the mobile screen size, the navigation menu again changes to a hamburger menu, and then I can look at all of the pages linked on this site. And it also works in the desktop format. And you can also use WordPress. Um, and that's one that I, familiar, I am familiar with. And I forgot to open this one up. But I just uh, did this site for a, a new mobile grooming company in California, Boops and Bubbles. And I, I this is a paid domain. So if you pay for a domain, then you won't see the WordPress in the name and the URL. But if I shrink this down, it is also mobile friendly and you can see the navigation menu changes. And so you could also use a, a, a site like WordPress where you can select a basic template and then customize it. And that's what I did here. Um, I added my own content um, from the client for this site. So that there are a lot of options here and it's basically what you're comfortable with and what you're familiar with. If you are familiar with WordPress or Wix, you can use those or if you're up for a challenge and want to learn something new. So this, you know, this class is really about what is going to benefit you. So if you would like to learn how to use WordPress or Wix or a content management system, this is your opportunity to try it. Or if you've never used Google Sites and you want to try it, um, then go for that. Or if you want to learn Bootstrap and Dreamweaver, you can take that, take that challenge on. If you're at a place where you just don't feel, feel like mentally you can take on that challenge, then do what's going to work best for you. All right, so um, let me make sure I've covered everything here. No, I see I haven't. So let me go back to my screen share and go back to the course page. And I'm going to go back to module nine. So this is really easy, but there is a final survey. So if you just take that for one point, you get an, a point. And it's just a few questions. And it's just to help me assess how I can improve this course for you and also how you're doing um, and how you felt about the course. So anything you want to communicate with me, uh, you can communicate it with me in this survey. And this is not anonymous, so I do know 
who um, what your who your the name is attached to the survey. So just keep that in mind. Whereas if you do, and I do encourage you to do the course evaluation, that's the university wide course evaluation that closes on the 29th. So for the final survey for this class, for my survey, you have until May 4th, that will close on May 4th. So like I said, everything closes on May 4th for this class. Um, but the university wide course evaluation closes April 29th. So make sure you get those in before then you just you, it's linked on the course page. So you just click on it and take it. So that one, um, I do read all of the responses on that. Uh, and it can, the only thing that I don't like about it is it's so impersonal. Um, and it's with the rating system with the numbers. So I do encourage you to do that, but just keep in mind that there is a person behind the course that you're evaluating. So that's why I like to make a separate survey that is a little more personal. Um, that, and that one is not anonymous as compared to the university course evaluation. So I, I do would like for you to do both, definitely. Um, so the university one closes the 26th, my survey, closes May 4th and you get one point for doing that survey. Okay, so don't forget tonight, turn in the URL address. So everyone in your group needs to do that to your remote root server, the homepage. And one thing I did wanna show you that I said I was gonna do is show you a little bit of that organization of your site um, because now you're adding more stuff to your root folder. So in Dreamweaver, um, like, this is that ivory tower website example that I showed. If I go to files, um, you can see I have a lot of files in this ivory tower folder. Now it is all uploaded. So if you look at the URL address for it, let me close some of these things out here. Okay, so if you look at my URL directory here, it is uploaded to the ASU server to my public folder on the ASU server. So you can see here's my username, and then it's placed in a folder called Ivory Tower Project, and the home page is called ivoryindex.html. And so if you see these percentage symbols, if you add spaces, you're not really supposed to add spaces, so my bad. Um, I shouldn't have used space. I should have used the under, underscore instead of the spaces, but that's why it shows up funky here. And so if you look at my folder, here's my WIP folder. And then inside that folder, I have my portfolio. This is my, would be my class root folder. So I have everything inside this one root folder. I have a lot of subfolders in here. So here's my ivory tower project subfolder. And that's why that subfolder name shows up here in the URL address directory. And then here's the ivory index.html page inside this folder. Um, it is somewhere in there. Here it is, it's all the way at the bottom. So here's my ivory index.html page inside the ivory tower project folder that is hosted in my main root folder. So that's for the ASU server, you get one main root folder, then all your other projects, final projects need to be nested inside that folder. So if you put it inside a folder, that folder name must be here in the directory. So you need to copy and paste this whole URL address when you submit it for the professional site. So if you go back to module nine, I'm on the wrong course again. Um, so here we go, module nine, and then go to the e um, professional site and then just copy and paste that URL address here. And don't forget to add your peer evaluation form as well, and it should you should be allowed to add documents 
to that. So let me just make sure. Yes, you can submit files as well. So you can submit one um, file that's your peer evaluation, and then you just copy and paste your URL address. So again, tonight, don't forget to do that. Um, don't forget the peer evaluation form. And then if you need to make updates on your ePortfolio, let me know if you did that so I can um, update your grade and look at that again. And then responsive redesign is due next Tuesday. And then also the discussion five. Don't forget the course evaluations and the final survey. Are there any questions now? Those y'all still with me? We're good. I'm good here. Thank okay. you so much. You're sure. Thanks, Ethan. Anybody have any questions or comments? All right. Well, I I am gonna send a, another email announcement. Um, just about there's gonna be a virtual celebration on Reading Day for the art department. And what that is, is, um, is just a way to celebrate all of your hard work for the semester. And um, our program, the GCM program, is part of the art department. Um, so you are all part of that. Um, it's a collective way to see what everybody's been working on in the semester, whether you're um, in photography or studio art or um, graphic arts. So that's just a fun way to kind of share what you've been working on. So if you'd like to be a part of that, I'll share the link to that Zoom. It's going to be a virtual. And then if you like to be a part of it, you just sign up for a time slot. It's from two to four. You just give like a really brief presentation, um, very informal. And then I will upload your work. So what I did last semester is I had a couple of students from this class participate in that, and they just linked I linked the URL address to their sites and did a screenshot of their homepage and posted it on the Google slides. And then they could share um, the website with the class during the presentations. If you don't want to share a presentation, you can just join and just look at the Google slides and just see what everyone's been working on. Um, so I'll be sending that out in the announcement. Thank you all for staying engaged throughout the semester. I know it's been a difficult one. Um, it's been a difficult year. And um, you have all done a phenomenal, phenomenal job staying engaged um, in creating these final websites. So I've really enjoyed seeing what you've been doing and can't wait to see the rest of the projects as they come in. So stay in touch with me. Um, there's no more Zooms or office hours for this class, but I'm still around. So if you do need to touch base with me about anything, we can schedule an appointment or send me an email. Okay, well, I'm going to let you all go then and finish up all your other work. Um, I'll stick around in case anybody does have any, thinks of any questions for me. Yeah. Bye.